close your eyes and watch your breath. As you breathe in, think of the breath sweeping through the body, clearing out all the cobwebs. As you breathe out, think of it sweeping out in the other direction. We have to do a little house cleaning every day because tensions build up in the body. Little thoughts of greed, aversion, and delusion go through the mind. They leave little traces here and there in the body. And as things begin to build up in the body, it gets less and less pleasant to be here. And we go running out someplace else, looking for something else, to, another place to be, another place to focus our attention, other little worlds that we can create for ourselves. So it's time to get back in and do a little house cleaning here. Sweep through the body, sweep through the body. As you breathe in, breathe out. Dissolve away any patterns of tension you may find here and there. Allow the mind to settle down, have a sense of well-being inside, where it can learn how to begin to learn how to depend on itself. Yesterday we had an ordination, part of the ordination that I, as the preceptor, had to teach the new candidate about the Triple Gem. People went, sometimes wonder, what are they talking about up there? They've never put a mic up. There's nothing secret. It's all very basic about what it means to take refuge in the Triple Gem. And it means not that the Buddha is going to come down and save us, or the Sangha is going to save us. What it means is that we look at them, we look to them for examples on how to live, how to find true happiness, how to learn how to depend on ourselves, because they learn how to depend on themselves, and they left behind instructions on how to do it. They gave examples, they gave instructions to the instructions, of course, of the Dhamma, the examples we can read about, and then we see that in the behavior of the noble disciples that are still alive after all these many generations have passed down. Then we take those lessons and we internalize them. The Buddha was a person of wisdom. We try to develop our wisdom. He was a person of purity. In other words, once he decided he was going to do something that was going to be harmless, he stuck with it. Anything that was going to be harmful, he abandoned it. That's what we mean by purity. And then finally, compassion. And after he gained awakening, he could have spent the whole rest of his life just sitting under a tree someplace experiencing the bliss of the release, but now we decided it was important to pass this teaching on. So we learn about the Buddha's wisdom, purity, and compassion, and we look at ourselves and say, where are we lacking in those qualities, and what can we do to give rise to them? He said that you have to be heedful, otherwise you have to see that your actions really do make a difference, so you have to be careful about what you do. You have to be ardent to try to do this really well. And then resolute, you stick with us in the face of difficulties. If you can develop those three qualities, then you become a refuge to yourself. You can develop wisdom. You can develop purity. You can, can develop compassion, too, by depending on these qualities. So here's your meditating. You're heedful to stay with the topic of the meditation, realizing that if you let the mind wander around, it may be pleasant for a while, but it doesn't really accomplish anything. And then you're ardent. You really want to do this well. Pay full attention to what you're doing. And then you're resolute, even though there are things that come up that are very tempting, you say, no. Any difficulties that come up, you say, no. This way you build a refuge inside. You've got to qualities, you develop qualities inside that you can depend on. And as you be, make yourself more dependable, you find other people can depend on you more as well. So this is a practice that spreads its benefits around, makes us more reliable people. And that's what the world needs right now, is reliable people. We have so many people who feel no compunction about telling lies, doing harmful things, going for the short-term pleasure and forgetting about the fact that a long-term pleasure is possible, a long-term harmless happiness is possible. So we do our part for the world by making ourselves more reliable. And at the same time, we find that we get refuge as well. We protect ourselves from the, the unskillful things we might have done otherwise. And as Buddha said, it ultimately takes you to a refuge where you're protected from even the benefits of skillful actions, because skillful actions are impermanent too. The ultimate refuge is something that doesn't need to be maintained. An ultimate happiness doesn't weigh any on anybody at all. And that can be found inside as well. So this is how we take refuge, by making ourselves the kind of people we can depend on.